In this video, we'll be looking for some more shortcuts related to from F1 to F12. Let's see that one by one. Now, when you only press F1, you might be knowing this, you get a help function. So similarly, if you only press some particular keys, therefore, if you see, I've not written here control, neither I've written as alt, I've just written as alone. For example, if you just press alone F1 key from a keyboard, what will happen is it will open the help tab, help dialog box where you can see the help and find out the options. So let's see that practically how we can go. These are the notes for you. After this video, you can refer this notes and you know, you, you can remember those shortcuts again. So let's see that how we can go. If I press F1 from my keyboard, a help window will open for the Excel. I'll press F1 from my keyboard and you see there's a help open for 2016 version, which I'm working right now. I can just type and search whatever I want. For example, if I want the sum function, I'll type here and press enter. Related to sum, I'll get all the, you know, different functions which are available in the Excel sheet. I'll just close it right now. I do not want it. Next one is if I want to edit any cell without using mouse, how do I do it? So if I want to edit this cell, let's say there's Smith written over here and I want to add Smith comma or Smith some space, some word. How do I do that? When we have a mouse, you just double click and do it. But without using mouse, you can just press F2 key from a keyboard. That is F2 key from a keyboard. And you can just type here space and you can just type here as Adam or any, any word you can say and press enter. So this way you can get it added over here. That is F2 for edit a cell. Next I have that's F3. Now you might have seen the topic for the name range. Now if you see here carefully, I have selected this area and I've given the name for this range as names. And what I want is I want to type that names in this area itself. So I am in the same cell. If you see there's D2, I want to type here in F2 or G2 anywhere. What I'll do is I'll press F3 from my keyboard, only F3. What will happen? I'll get a dialog box. In that dialog box, it will give me all the name ranges which are already in the Excel sheet. I'll press F3 from my keyboard. Now you can see these are the name ranges which are available. There's only one range name which is available. It says, do you want to paste the name? I'll say yes, yes, I want to paste the name and I'll click on OK. So once I click on OK, what will happen is it will say as equal to names. The names is nothing but a name range and I'll press enter and you see the name has given here. So similarly, if I type here same F3, I'll just press F3 from my keyboard, select this names and click on OK and press enter. What will happen? Adam. But what if I type here, if I keep my cursor at this location and press F3, let's see what happens. I'll press F3. I'll select this names, click on OK and I'll press enter. So what will happen is it will not give me the value. The formula was same. The function was same. Shortcut key F3. But always remember when you have a name range, it works only in that area, in that record. If the name range is from D2 to D9, it will work only in that range till the entire end record. It will not work in D1 in this one first row. It will neither work after this itself. See, let's see one more try. We can do it. I'll press F3 from my keyboard. I'll select this name range and I'll click on OK and I'll press enter. You see, it's not working here. But if I type the same thing here, it will work 100%. The last one I'll show you F3 and select the names and I'll click on OK, enter. So you see it's working, same name range will be given here, all the places. So I'll delete it. So F3 shortcut I was trying to show you that is pasting the name range. Next, I have something as F4 is what you call as repeat action. Suppose what I'll do is I have copied this control C and if I want to paste it here, control V. And if I want to repeat this action again, I'll use the shortcut key F4 from my keyboard. I'll press F4 from my keyboard. You see the action is repeated again. So like this, if you keep on pressing F4, the action will be repeated again. Next, I have something. If I want to go to the dialog box of go to, how I can go? I'll just press F5 from my keyboard. I'll press F5 from my keyboard. I'll get a dialog box. Where do you want to go? Do you want to go to this names? That is a range. Or do you want to go to some table? Or do you want to go to some reference? That is the cell number. So I'll tap here a cell number. Let's say I, uh, I5. So right now I'm in the cell number G8. I want to go to I5. I'll click on OK. My cursor, if you see, is in the cell number I5. Yeah, here it is. Here it is in the cell number I5. So I can jump to that place using the shortcut key. One is Control G and here I have F5. Now, next one is a bit different. That is F6 is like if you want to go to the next, uh, you know, pane itself. So if you see here, F6 is next pane. Now what exactly the pane says is, I'll just try to explain you. If I press F6 from my keyboard, right now my cursor is in this pane, this area. I'll press F6. I'll press F6 from my keyboard. If you observe, this will be highlighted. This, that is a taskbar at the bottom, which will be highlighted. Again, if I press F6 from my keyboard, what will happen? It will go on the top. Now I'll again press F6 from my keyboard. 
F6, you see it went uh, again to that place. Now I'll keep on pressing F6 one more time. I'll press F6 from my keyboard and again F6, you see at this location and at this place, you see it keeps on changing. I'll press F6, F6, F6. So F6 is if you want to change the pains from this pane to this pane or the last pane itself. So you can keep on using shortcut key F6 from your keyboard. Next I have that is the seventh, uh, the shortcut key that is the F7. That is nothing but a spell check. What exactly the spell check is? Suppose I have written some wrong name or some spelling here. That is, I have written here this spelling. Now, if you want to check the spelling, what you can do is you can press F7 from a keyboard. It's a shortcut key for spell check. I'll press F7 from my keyboard. It will ask you, do you want to start the, you know, checking of the spellings at the beginning of the sheet? I'll say yes. Yes. It will give you options, all the options, what do you want? So go to, you want to use that got or G O or G O or anything. If you want to select this G O two and I can select as I, <coughs> I can click on ignore once, ignore all. I can say as change. So once I click on change, it will go to the next spell check and it will give me loads of options available. Right now I do not want, I'll just click on close option and <coughs> click on OK. Next one I have, I was on the shortcut key that was as spell check. Next I have F8 key. Now without using mouse, if you want to select the areas without using mouse or the mouse pad from a laptop, what I can do is I want to select this entire region. So what you have to do is you have to press F8 from a keyboard. I'll press F8 from my keyboard like this. F8, F8, yeah. Now I'll use only one hand and I can show you how to use the, you know, arrow keys, right arrow key, down arrow key, right? So F8 is used to expand your selection. Once it is done, you can just copy, paste, format, bold, italic, underline, whatever you want, and then you can leave it. Similarly, I'll just show you one more example. Right now, my cursor is at this place, at this location. I want to select some few cells around that. So if I want to expand my selection is, I have to press F8 key. That is from my keyboard, I'll press F8 key. That's it. Now again, you can leave it and you can use your arrow keys. So suppose if I use down arrow key, right arrow key, or left arrow key. So this way I can keep on selecting the cells. So F8 is used for expanding the selection. Next I have F9 which is used to calculate a workbook. Now for calculating the formulas in the workbook, I have some numbers as 10 to 80 and if I want the sum of all the numbers, I'll press Alt equal to from my keyboard, Alt equal to and I'll get the sum. I'll get the sum Alt equal to. Yeah. Yeah. So I've pressed Alt equal to. I've got sum of all the ranges and I'll press enter. So once I press enter, I've got the answer as 360. Now suppose if I change the number from here, let's say 10 to let's say, well, let's say 60 in the sense I'll change it to 40. So or 50, I'll change it to 50. I show I'm expecting answer more than 360. I'll type here 50 enter. But if you see, if you observe the answer did not change, why it did not change? I'll just show you the reason. If I change it to 80 and press enter, you see the answer did not change. Let me check the formula. It's correct. The function is correct equal to sum e2 to e9. Now what is the problem exactly? I'll first explain you why it happened. I'll go to this file option. I'll go to options. This is a long cut, but I'm trying to show you wh why we are working on it. And if I go to formulas, if you see it says calculation options, I have selected by default as manual. I need to recalculate it manually. So recalculate workbook before saving it. So before saving it, it will calculate and then save it. Right now I'll click on OK. So I have to do a manual calculation. So now if you see for your understanding, I've written as F9 for calculate all. Now what exactly calculate all will say is, so now if I change it to let's say 50, still it is not changing. Why it is not changing? Because I have to do it manually. How do you, how we can do it? You have to press F9 key from a keyboard. So I'll press F9 from my keyboard and you see the answer changes automatically. Again, one more example, I'll just change it to 100, enter and I'll press F9 from my keyboard and you can see the number has automatically changed. So this shortcut can be used to calculate. If you do not want, you can go to that place and make it as automatic and you can automatically get all the calculations. Similarly, if I want to go to some other next next shortcut I have, that is uh, what you call F10. So F10 says as activate menu. You remember if I press Alt key from my keyboard, the menu gets activated. Similarly, I have the shortcut as F10 from my keyboard. So if I press F10 from my key keyboard, the tab gets, you know, activated. I can select if I want to go to A tab, I'll press A. If I want to go to review tab, I'll press R and so on. Next, I have something as F11, the shortcut key. 
if I want to create a chart for this data, if you have remember we have seen some shortcut keys over there, but here's a new shortcut. If you want to create a chart for this data in the new chart sheet, so how you can do is you can press F11 from a keyboard, only F11. So I'll just keep my cursor in the data, do not select it. And I'll press F11 from my keyboard. If you observe the data which, which was in some other sheet, it went away and I've created a separate chart sheet. The name of the chart sheet is chart two. In this place, there are no cells, only charts available. So F11 is the shortcut key to create a new chart in separate sheet. We have seen in the previous uh, video, which was there, if you want to create a chart in the same sheet, it was Alt F1. So I'll just remove this because I do not want it. I'll go back to that place, alone key, alone key, alone key. Yeah, this, this is the place. Yeah, so how do you create a chart is keep your cursor and press F11 from a keyboard. And the last one I have F12 that is the save as, I'll just press F12 from a keyboard and it will save the file and you want to save as a duplicate file, save as. You can give the name of the file, you can give the type of the file and you can click on save button. If you do not want, click cancel button. So I hope these are all the functions which are available for alone key F1 to F9, uh, sorry, F1 to F2N. And uh, that's all for this video. Thank you.